So welcome. In this next module, we're going to have a conversation with Dr. Bradley Efron. Uh, many of you may be out there may be familiar with some of his work on uh, the bootstrap uh, resampling technique, and a lot of you have probably run into that. Just want to uh, say a few words about his many accomplishments. Uh, I won't hit everything here, but he's a, a member of the National Academy of Sciences, a member of the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. Uh, he was a MacArthur Fellow. He won the National Medal of Science. Uh, he was the president of the American Statistical Association at one time. He, uh, in addition to all of his uh, scientific accomplishments, is extremely well spoken. I've uh, interviewed him before for journalistic pieces, and he is the founding editor and editor in chief of, in, of the Annals of Applied Statistics. And so, uh, we're really privileged to have him here today Thank to get uh, to get some uh, advice uh, from the uh, the editing and public publishing side of things. It's I'm just glad you didn't say the horse's <laughs> mouth. <laughs> so uh, I'm just going to start by asking, uh, besides good science, which is obvious we need in our papers, what key elements are journal editors looking for when you get a paper in? Well, now with me, you're talking about a statistics journal, yes, which yes. is a different... A little bit of a different beast, which is uh, why I'm glad to have you. Statistics papers have a philosophical side and a technical side, and the um, uh, people tend to get overwhelmed with the technical side and forget that they're trying to make a point about doing statistics that at some level is going to approach uh, apply to scientists communicating with statisticians yeah. or maybe I should say statisticians reading the article and communicating with scientists so it's an it's an essay in communication and if it's not enough to be published you want to be read also, and so if you want to be read, make the paper pleasant to read. So it's newspaper writers are very good at this. The the first paragraph or the first line says what the story is going to be about. The first paragraph says it again in a somewhat greater extension. The 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 first section then says it all again, <clears throat> uh, in ever more detail. Uh, and the um, that a good scientific paper should make it clear to the uh, reasonably good reader uh, what what the, is going to be said. Um, a paper that's going to be read should have some element of surprise in it. Uh, that is, it shouldn't be that the time you, by the time you say what you're going to do, everybody knows exactly how this is going to come out. But you, you should make it easy for the reader to get into uh, into the subject matter. In particular, if you have an example that motivated you, put it up front. Don't hide it in the back after uh, the person has worked his way through a, a lot of lemmas and theorems and bad notation. Um, <laughs> so uh, editors uh, and referees uh, have to read the paper, uh, and making it easier to read the paper uh, vastly increases your chances of having a success. Oh, great, great. At every level. That, that's great to hear. That's a lot of what we've been talking about in this course. Yeah. And uh, what do you think is the number one mistake that scientists, mathematicians, statisticians make when submitting a paper for publication? Well, I, I run an applied statistics yeah. journal right now, and I turned down a certain number of papers the first minute because they aren't about applications. Mm -hmm. And the people love to write about theory and methodology because that's an easy thing to do. Applications are harder, so for my journal, a mistake is to, is to send it to the wrong journal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, if you want to make a, a point about something, choose the right journal to, to submit to. And, and a journal is a magazine, and people get the magazine and read it for interest. So it should be interesting. And uh, <laughs> trying to avoid heavy notation and things that slow readers down right at the beginning, uh, lots of definitions are bad right at the beginning. Uh, you should s clearly say what you're going to do, and it should be clear the abstract and the first introduction are crucial. Uh, that's what uh, editors mainly look at, usually, uh, is the beginning of the paper, and then they farm it out to associate editors or referees. So the, pay a lot of attention to the very beginning. Mm, great. And you've said a few things already, but what other tips can you give to authors to increase their chances of getting published? Uh, good graphics helps a lot in our field, yeah. and an attractive uh, format. Uh, uh, and I avoid 
uh, in my own writing, which is far from perfect, uh, I avoid masses of equations or masses of definitions. I don't mind using bullet points to set things off quickly. Um, I, uh, you, you, you can easily kill yourself by uh, messing around at the beginning before uh, the, uh, some speakers in talks yeah. uh, spend an awful lot of time at the beginning not getting anywhere and they've lost the, the, the best hook you have is right at the beginning and so uh, uh, think about that uh, uh, style isn't terribly necessary um, uh, Einstein said I, I leave uh, uh, style to my tailor but <laughs> a, a pleasant reading style helps a lot and clunky English hurts. Yeah. Uh, it, every time you, you, you have a sentence that's sort of hard to decode, you've hurt the reader and they'll stop pretty soon. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. the reader might be the referee. Good, yeah. And so I think you've hit upon this a little bit already about writing style. And one of the questions that frequently comes up in my course, has come up in this course uh, that I'm teaching now, is students say to me, well, you know, that's not the way the scientific literature is written and uh, they, you know, it, it's, it's written in this style and if I don't copy the very verbose style that's out there, I'm somehow not going to uh, be a member of the club mm -hmm. and I'm going to be rejected and um, I might dumb down my science and so they're very afraid to write in a more clear style. So can you help alleviate that fear a little bit? Um, it's, it's hard to dumb down more than... <laughs> uh, it's, it, most people don't know as much about the thing you're you're talking about as you do so dumbing it down is is a good thing that's what you're <laughs> supposed to do uh, especially at the beginning of the paper if yeah. you uh, you you're not going to impress anybody with fancy uh, technical material everybody's seen that uh, or maybe three people in the world will be impressed <laughs> but you're not trying to get to those three people usually the um, uh, I, I would one advice I'd have is go read uh, the greats, uh, people like Naaman in our field or Hotelling, wonderful writers, and you can see how good they are at getting to the point and uh, and uh, not jumping around it and not trying to be fancy. Yeah. So don't be fancy. <laughs> good. Dumbing down is not such a bad idea. <laughs> and. Uh, what advice would you have for first-time authors, a lot of the classes in their first uh, paper submissions? Um, I, I'm always grateful when I get a submission that says this, this is my first paper, I'm a graduate student, this is my mm -hmm. early try. I, I give special attention to those papers and I think most referees do. And so it's okay to call it out when you're yes, submitting the paper yes, in a cover definitely. letter? Yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, and that, that excuses certain mistakes. Uh, you can easily believe that a first-time author might put in too much detail or uh, yeah. uh, too much stuff that their thesis advisor <laughs> thought was interesting or right, something okay. like that. Uh, uh, so I'm definitely easier on uh, first-time authors. We want them, you yeah. know, it's fresh. Yeah. The, the trouble with most journals is they're dull and you want a fresh <laughs> point of view and you want fresh writing and you want fresh ideas most of all, of course. Yeah, good. And uh, do you have any tips for, let's say that the paper comes in and you um, reject it, but you give the author the chance to resubmit with major revisions. Are there some tips at that point in the process that you can give my class? Well, we have a, uh, most journals, I think, have a category of, um, uh, we have f various categories. Yeah. There's withdrawn. If I, don't, if I don't think a paper is impress uh, appropriate, I'll just withdraw it that right, very right. first minute. Uh, then there's... Uh, uh, rejected flat yeah. out, but rejected with resubmission is a dangerous one for both <laughs> the referee and the author. Uh, and one thing to do is not resubmit but go someplace else. Uh, but if you do resubmit, and uh, you, you, you can usually, if you press hard enough, you very often can get published yeah. again. And uh, there, there's the usual thing about paying attention to the uh, what the suggestions were and <laughs> right. stuff like that. Uh, making the paper shorter is a good, good, good idea when you resubmit. Yeah. Shorter and clearer. Okay. <laughs> good. Uh, but choosing another journal was not a bad uh, strategy. We, I'd say resubmissions um, uh, get through less often than first submissions.
uh, that is, uh, they, they're very often uh, unsuccessful. They take an awful lot of energy from the yeah. uh, authors. Yeah, good, good. And can you give some words of encouragement for a young scientist who might have gotten their first uh, paper rejection? <laughs> Well, uh, my papers still get rejected, <laughs> and uh, I, I found over the years that the papers of mine that get rejected fall into two classes, uh, ones where I was much too enthusiastic about the uh, material, and the other, my best papers, uh, yeah. uh, and my bootstrap paper, my best paper ever got rejected, <laughs> and, uh, um, and there I did persevere. And, and so, um, the, the system is far from uh, perfect. And very often, uh, fresh ideas arouse the ire of mm -hmm, referees yes. who uh, uh, who uh, are tied to the old ideas. Uh -huh. It's an editor's job to try and spot such cases and uh, persevere. Uh, there, there are too many papers, so people are always looking for reasons to reject sure. papers. Uh, and I'm always worried. Uh, especially if I see a paper that arouses a lot of hostility in the reviews, I, that's sometimes a clue it's in my second class of brilliant <laughs> papers that are annoying the readers because of fresh ideas. So anyway, don't take it too seriously. P papers get rejected all the time good. and doesn't mean that you had a bad idea. Yeah, good, good. Um, and you know the publication process itself is undergoing a lot of changes right now. What uh, kinds of changes do you envision are going to be happening in the next decade? That's a, that's a question I never can answer. In that, uh, I, everybody says that there aren't going to be any print journals, right. but I think there will be print journals. <laughs> the same way there's still movies, and the same way there's still radio. I think the print journals will get more like real magazines, like New Yorker or yeah, something like yeah. that. That is something that where the uh, bundling effect of, of receiving a, a bunch of stuff in the mail and, and be, having it be labeled as very interesting uh, is important. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course there will be a lot more electronic publication yeah. and maybe, the, uh, maybe there won't be journals, maybe everybody <laughs> will publish themselves. Right. But I, that's, <laughs> somebody has to do quality uh, checks and, and somebody has to evaluate papers to say this is worth reading and this isn't. Yeah. That's what the journals do. I don't know what's going to happen about electronic versus print. Good. And if there was one thing that you could change about the publication process, what would it be? I wish people would submit fewer papers. I think people <laughs> write far too many papers. Uh, it, it doesn't help you get promoted to have a very long list of papers, at least not at any place decent. What gets you promoted, if that's what the, the worry is, is, um, is having an idea that impresses people. The, um, uh, and it's um, so fewer and better. Uh, uh, Gauss's uh, uh, motto in Latin, which I can't remember, is few but ripe. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, uh, that, that's a really good motto if you can stick to it. Now I understand that when you have to have some papers, say you're going up for tenure, uh, you have to have some papers, they have to have made an impression on people. Yeah, and yeah. so uh, people who publish too much wear out their audience, in my opinion. Mm, the, um, uh, so that would be one thing yeah. I could yeah, change about good, it, yeah. uh, is um, less, <laughs> less <laughs> is more. <laughs> And we're talking a lot about that in writing right now. Uh, and uh, is there anything else that you would, uh, any other advice that you would offer for uh, for the class? Um, yeah, don't take it. Uh, take the writing and thinking part very seriously. Don't take the submission and acceptance rejection part too seriously because it's pretty random. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much for being with okay. us today, Brad. Good. I enjoyed this. <laughs> Thank you. The preceding program is copyrighted by the Board of Trustees of the Leland Stanford Junior University. Please visit us at med.stanford.edu.